Hey guys, and welcome back to the Academy Bites podcast. This week, we've got myself, David Lewis, and I'm gonna be talking about uh, leaving cert biology. As you guys probably are aware, I teach biology and higher level maths here at the Dublin Academy. So in this first episode here, what I'm gonna talk about are the, the benefits of studying biology. And for me, biology is, uh, well, I obviously am a bit biased. I think it's quite an interesting subject, so it's it's quite relatable. Uh, I did a little bit of physics and a little bit of chemistry uh, in my time in both in secondary school and in, in college, but I really personally found them almost a little bit unrelatable because it was quite hard for me to visualize or actually make a real life situation of what was going on. Biology is more, I suppose, more evident of how it is around me every single day. And I found that quite relatable and it therefore made it easier for me to remember the different facts and the different ideas and concepts and diagrams that I had to produce on the day as a student. I think that that obviously transfers across now still today as it's the same course that I did uh, uh, when I did the Leaving Cert. Uh, I know some of the teachers are a hell of a lot older than me and maybe they're only messing up with it. I, what I'm saying is biology, as you guys are probably aware, has been around since uh, 2005 was the first mainstream with that. So that is a big benefit um, in that it is relatable for students. I think as well, biology gets a little bit of a, I suppose there's a misconception out there that it like, it is a very, very long course. There is, you know, the 38 topics or however you like to break them up or your book breaks them up yourself. And a lot of people are afraid that it is too long and people come to me the whole time thinking about, uh, oh, we haven't got this done or this chapter and that chapter done. I feel that uh, with, with, the, with the passion that a lot of students do have for biology, a lot of these chapters can be intertwined or interconnected. And um, so I think it is possible to actually really concentrate your study of biology to give yourself an effective leaving cert grade itself so what i mean by that is if you're thinking of taking up a subject in sixth year or just in one year or you maybe you felt because of whatever reason you missed out on some lessons in fifth year it is something that you could really i suppose throw your shoulder into and start knocking down some big leaving cert points or big leaving cert topics quite quickly and um, I'm going to talk a little bit about how the exam is structured and tell you how that actually relates to what I'm talking about there a second ago. Um, the exam has been the same, again, as I said, since 2005, obviously barring last year. Okay, It's still last year's exam was based on previous exams. It was just slightly altered a tiny bit to give the student extra choice. So the exam is structured in that we have three sections, section A, B, and C. Okay, Section A people call the short questions. Section B is the based on the experiments, and section C people, in my opinion, misconstrue it as the long questions. It is a long, they are long questions. However, as an examiner, we're always looking for short answers, short to the point answers. You don't get extra marks for writing an essay. In fact, that would actually, uh, I suppose, slightly agitate me as a teacher. Now, inside each of these sections, we already know what units the questions are coming from. So I'm already able to tell you that in section A, there's gonna be two questions from unit one, two questions from unit two, two questions from unit three. In section C, there's gonna be one question from unit one, one question from unit two, one question from unit three. So what this means is there are certain chapters that are more, um, that you get more bang for your book in terms of studying than others. So just because a chapter is really, really complicated or long in your book, or maybe it's in, it goes into a serious amount of detail, doesn't actually, um, I suppose, transmit or doesn't actually convert into leaving cert percentage and leaving cert po points ultimately why we are actually here. Um, so I can actually tell a student at the very, very start of the year, look, if you study unit one and you study the experiments, which is section B, and actually in fact you study the experiments in this particular manner, you can actually knock out in three to four hours of good concentrated focus study, you can be getting 40 to 45% of your paper, like that. So yes, while it is quite long, uh, like in terms of taking all the different chapters, with a little bit of knowledge of how the exam is structured and a little bit of thought and idea in how the examiner, or what, what, uh, what chapters the examiner actually favors, uh, a student can really start to that take big slices of the pie out very, very, very quickly. So come Christmas, you could actually be ready to sit a Leaving Cert paper. 
and maybe even I know it might grind by this it only takes 17 classes for a student to get to potentially get 100% and then after that we're practicing the questions practicing the paper adding giving ourselves options uh, and I feel that knowledge of that can take the stress out of the long term um, the long term aspect of the paper because you feel you're, you're sorted pretty early and then knowledge of that can ultimately result in a better grade for the for the students so uh, other common myths that you hear about the about the subject will be stuff like, uh, and I, this sounds terrible from somebody who actually loves biology. Other common myths might be like that you should read biology in your spare time, or you should you should keep up to date with uh, with magazines or watch the videos uh, online and stuff. Uh, I think that this um, from being a well-rounded biology student and a lover of biology that's brilliant but for the exam this is this is obsolete this is a waste of your time and in fact could end up confusing you uh, one thing i say to students at the start of every single year i say look hands up who studies chemistry hands up who studies ag science hands up who studies uh home ec this is none of those hands up who likes biology outside of this hands up who's into say food outside of this throw all that knowledge out the window because this course as i said it was made, finalized back, uh, started in 2003, went out in the mainstream 2005. It is quite dated. So if you end up as a student going out and um, and maybe studying, uh, you know, studying stuff that's not on the course, not only could you confuse, confuse yourself, but you could be learning true biology uh, and then not actually getting a return in terms of leaving certain points. So uh, do, I would not do that uh, whatsoever. I would stick to the course material. Uh, I would also have a look at the syllabus and see what actually is examinable in terms of there's extra stuff that is in your books um, or that maybe be present, might be presented to you in school to get you engaging in the subject, which can't actually come up in the June exam itself. Um, something else that I noticed that students think about is the actual experiments. You do this rite of copy and you have to do that as a rite of passage to for your teacher to sign you off on your you're leaving certain they want you to do a write-up so you do that that's fantastic but when it comes to actually doing the leaving cert itself nobody looks at the write-up copy you don't get points for it like you used to back in the junior cert days you um what what you need to be looking at is how does the examiner actually ask questions and again it's a quiz it's a one one or a couple of word answer question it's not nothing about doing a write-up you never have to know how many uh, i suppose grams of a of a product to use or milliliters. You don't even have to know your numeric results. You just have to know generically what happens. So in in order to get the 60 marks or the 15%, which comes out in these experiments, you need to be set up to answer the questions they ask you. There's no point in knowing your write-up and then not knowing why, uh, why the graph levels out in the saturation point of photosynthesis or something like that. So the best way to study for the experiments is again to see what the examiner asks answer those questions using your notes and then and then dictate it go go towards that so the write up and knowing that sort of stuff don't waste uh, your time on that the another thing that's not really a common myth but it's i suppose a mistake i see students making is they really focus in on what they cannot do so i'll give you two examples one example would be a lot of students would not like genetic crosses uh, and i personally feel that genetic crosses are doable and to a student who is properly shown and i suppose i have a little bit of an advantage being a maths teacher showing the process to come out with this uh, a student that has properly shown one method could answer any question and should be banking on that as a hundred percenter but if you if you don't like genetic crosses don't waste two three four study sessions on them what you should be doing is you should be uh, you should just be leaving them out because you as a student should have an exam plan and you you should be an exam expert where you know you can leave out a certain chapter so if you don't like genetic crosses, one, they don't come up every year. Two, they're one quarter or one out of four of the types of questions that the examiner can ask in that specific topic. And three, you could just not do that question. You have choice on the day of the exam. So that's a mistake a lot of students make. They focus, they're like, oh, it could come up. Yeah, it could, but just don't answer that question. Okay, all the questions that you just have a different choice, which is worth the exact same amount. Um, and another idea would be, say, for example, in photosynthesis, I know straight away when students come into me that they don't like the photosynthesis chapter because of the electron pathways. Now, I've studied the electron pathways in, uh, in college. I actually uh, read a little bit into them in a, in a certain science book that I was reading personally. And it is, it, you could study that for the rest of your life and still not be 
a, a, an expert on it. You still could not be able to write an essay or stand up and speak in front of people. They'd say, you've left this out, you've left that out. Remember, you're preparing yourself to answer an exam question, not to write an essay on an electron pathway. So if you have a number of key points, because remember, that's what the examiner is looking for. If you have a number of key points in your arsenal, you're going to be able to answer any question that comes up. And every key point is the same as another. For as a silly example, if the question was, what name a color? If you say blue, that's as relevant a key point of an answer as red or orange or yellow or whatever. So um, what a lot of students end up doing is reverting their question in photosynthesis to try bluff the things they don't know. And I see that happening again and again and again. So realistically in this, these three ideas uh, tie together. If you, have an, uh, if you have a knowledge of how the exam is laid out, okay, you can save yourself time, a serious amount of time and a serious amount of effort, a serious amount of, of uh, stress. If you know um, if you know that, then it's, it's seriously doable to do very, very well in biology very quickly. Um, and then you don't fall into any of those common traps that a lot of students come into me in the academy and maybe they end up joining the grinds a little bit later and their bad habits, bad mistakes and a bad waste of time that they've already uh, that they've mistakes they've already made and time that they can't get back. And um, so the best thing that a student can do to get organized for biology is to look at the layout of the exam for this year. Okay, and again, they can slightly change because of you know the COVID and, uh, and that, but look at the layout and then look at the different units in which the, the topics are actually laid out in and build an exam plan. If you want an exam plan, I'm pretty sure it's fairly uh, fairly free online or in my uh, in my set of notes. I build the exam pyramid, which means that you can actually study the bottom rung, the next rung, the next rung. And that's how I actually teach it. And a student that does that has a plan, therefore can actually set a realistic goal for themselves and they can follow that. They know what they should be doing in their study session versus I'm going to do biology. I'll just open the book somewhere. So. When you have that exam plan, then you can focus on how you can make your studying a little bit more effective, which is something I do by using these things called A4 sheets. But sure, we can talk about that a different day. So I hope you've enjoyed this podcast. I hope it's taken away a few of the myths. Uh, if I was to summarize it in one word, it would be organization. Okay, organization. And if you sort that out, you cannot fail but to do well. It, you don't have to be really, really talented. Maybe like you could have to be a chemistry or really phys physics minded. Biology is if you put in the work, you are gonna you are gonna reap the rewards. 